Hey, everybody. Welcome to Pale in Comparison, a proud member of the Doof Network. In this podcast, my sister uses her knowledge of the otherverse to take a look at Pact, Wildbow's most ornithological work, and I try to not give away any spoilers. I'm Jenny, and Malia convinced me to read Worm. I'm Malia, and Jenny convinced me to read everything else. This episode, we are covering Execution, chapters 13.3 and 13.4. Before we get into that, however, I'd like to issue a spoiler warning. In fact, I'm going to issue a spoiler warning for my spoiler warning. If you haven't read 21.14 in Pale, skip ahead like, you know, 15 seconds or whatever. This podcast is filled with pale spoilers. If you don't know if Avery fucking dies and don't want us to tell you, stop now, read pale, and come back to this podcast. As for Pact, there will be full spoilers through the chapters we are covering. Yeah, what the fuck, man? (laughs) It's fine. Yeah. The amount of Pact spoiler tags that I've seen in the pale spoiler section of the Discord has me real concerned. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I haven't read the pill section of the Discord for a little bit, so that's kind of funny, though. Um, Oh, my goodness. Yeah, so we probably are. We we might discuss some of that in this episode, guys, just so you know. So be warned. If you haven't read 21.14, then just maybe like wait on this episode just in case. Because I'm probably (laughs) going to talk about some of that stuff because how can you not? Anyway, (laughs) Uh, we're going to talk about our chapter summary, um, which is pretty short, but I feel like it's short and sweet, kind of sums it up, right? Which is what a summary is supposed to do. Um, Green Eyes talks to Blake about the relationship at a very inappropriate time. Blake passes a barrier and talks to some people, and then Blake slides into some DMs. What did you think of these chapters, Malia? Um, They were good. It was a big like action chapter and then a big... Like an entirely conversation chapter, which was fun. I love when mm-hmm. Wildo does different things with format, um, especially like online forums are always fun. So yeah, yeah, these were these were good. Although I do take two issues with your chapter summary. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. One is that you couldn't have told the- me before I fucking started recording. <laughs> well, one is I you no, know, I I like it. I think it's funny. I just want to. I just I think Blake started it. Um, I mean. Yeah, but like it kept going, like right, into did, the she appropriate. Didn't continue it. She continued it into the inappropriateness of like right. being attacked to where he was like, "Wait, really? Wait, right. really? Okay." <laughs> and then I would say that other people slide into Blake's DMs, but it's funnier to phrase it the way you did. I mean, he like joined their conversation, right? He joined the group chat. That's kind of what I was getting at, right? I think it was a good summary. It was funny. <laughs> No, I, I'm glad you like it. I'm just I'm I'm, I'm confused about the last part. Well, I but feel like a DM is a, is just between two people, and a group chat's not a DM. Okay, well, yeah, well, that's just semantics to me. I'm just like whatever. It's <laughs> it's it's good enough. <laughs> Everyone knew what I meant. You know what I meant. It's, okay, Molly. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Molly. Huh? <laughs> semantics. Gosh. All right. So, <laughs> what a weird mood, y'all. This is fucking. It's, it's fucking weird that's what happens when you start off like with that Ooh. fucking pale spoiler you just get in a weird mood you know well i just we don't even know is the thing no i mean it's a good spoiler like there wasn't anything else you could have put frankly if you would have put something else like i, I don't could, know i had like, to acknowledge if, if avery's gonna get another coin you know <laughs> it's not gonna <laughs> doesn't quite like <laughs> if you don't know whether liberty ever gets her photo shoot that would be a fun one a nice one yeah well, everyone forget about that because you should use that for <laughs> one in the future. <laughs> True. Uh, okay. Well, besides um, my apparently inadequate summary, um, what did you think of the chapters? <laughs> yeah, 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 they're good. <laughs> um, I just, I feel like, especially rereading this, Blake's just like really getting me down. He's like not fun at all. I feel mm. like, like it's been a really long time, but I feel like Blake used to be funny. Like, you know, before the abyss or whatever. And he's just, like, not funny anymore. And more than that, he, like, doesn't understand that other people are funny. Hmm. And it's really a bummer. Um, All right. I'm going <laughs> to be interested to hear um, your elaborations as we go through. Cool. I want you to point out a couple examples for me. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be good. 
Um, <laughs> all right, well, we'll start off uh, with um, I, I, st- I still stand by my summary in terms of it making sense completely, <laughs> by the way. So I'm sticking with it. So we're starting out with Green Eyes talking to Blake about the relationship at a very inappropriate time. Yeah, this was, um, I mean, this was just fun. It was, I also, I mean, okay, yeah, we'll get there. But so Blake sends Evan off to do recon because he's a bird and it's very useful. Mm-hmm. But also, it, yeah, it it does kind of give them this chance to have this like adultish conversation, which is fun. I don't think that was Blake's intention. It was more like, oh, awkward, feel the, feel the silence. But um, Evan is pretty absent from this from both of these chapters actually mm-hmm. because he's not in the chat um <laughs> yes even harder for a bird to type than a tree i guess <laughs> although he's had a decent amount of practice with the that's true with the um, control game with the phone yeah. and all that yeah. yeah i think evan would actually do a bit better yeah, that's a good like... point <laughs> well you know yeah i i didn't get what was happening with this i didn't understand blake's plan especially the like well i'll find some of the like younger duchamps and they'll tell me who to murder like wild (laughs) okay (laughs) um like yeah it seems like he wants to find mags and it was like oh something to do with molly maybe some sort of whatever but it's it seems like he actually wants to find the junior council to build his hit list or whatever Hmm. um and i just it didn't make sense to me that they would all be in one place. I was like, did they all like sneak out and like disobey their parents who probably made them promise to like stay inside unless whatever um, or, you know, something. And it just didn't occur to me that like they would be online <laughs> in a, like group message. Um, mm-hmm. But it makes total sense. And yeah, it does. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so Blake and Green Eyes are hanging out and he starts mothering her about how her hand is cut and she's like it's not the drains like everything's fine like everything's better than that place and blake's mm-hmm. like uh i don't know that i agree and i'm like okay blake let's 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 recenter ourselves <laughs> <laughs> um but you know he's like i'll carry you piggyback and yeah it's very sweet yeah it's nice um and i just i don't quite get blake I, I I'm 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 not sure how I feel about bl- this conversation in terms of Blake. Um, okay. Like, well, so one thing is, um, Green Eyes makes some joke about meals. Oh yeah, he's talking about his bike and how it was really important to him, and he saved up so much money. And he's like, yeah, I remember like skipping meals and stuff sometimes to like save money. And Green Eyes was like, skipping meals? And he's like, it took me a second to realize she was joking. And I'm like, come on, that was really funny. Like, coming from her, that was so funny. Her whole thing is she wants to fuck you and she likes food. Like, but I mean, <laughs> okay, in, in Blake's defense, like, her fixation on food, I could see that making it hard to tell if she was joking. That's because true. it could be, like, that fucking serious. Like, you know, like, you had to skip meals. <laughs> You know. Yeah, and I I guess she he couldn't see her face and stuff, so that's harder to tell because he's carrying her, so it's harder to like you know she doesn't he can't see that she's like really smiling or something. Yeah, I I took that personally less that like he's losing a sense of humor and more just that like I mean it wouldn't she's be that much of a food. shocker if she was yeah. serious, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so Blake's like yeah, like we don't really know each other. And Green Eyes eventually is like, but we could in the biblical sense, which is fun. Um, And subtle. (laughs) I mean, so basically Green Eyes is like, I like never had any ambition in my whole life. Like I never really cared about anything Uh or anyone and no one ever really cared about me. And like, that's how I ended up in the drains. And Hmm. it's really sad. Um, and even now she's talked, you know, Evan wants to set himself on fire. Blake wants to like get his bike back or whatever. And she's just like, you know, I want food. I want to hang out. I don't understand the ambition thing. And I don't know. It's just, it's, she's so, she and Blake are so different. Mm-hmm. Um, And I, like, I feel like Blake having a sense of direction and purpose is good. Mm-hmm. But I also think, if he could be a little bit more present and be a little bit more like chill and appreciate the present moment, that would be really good for him. Um, Blake has no chill, Malia. He has no. 
that's why it's good to have someone who's kind of the opposite of you, right? Yeah. We um Ben and I did this marriage prep thing that the Catholic Church has you do, and it was this like weekend retreat, and they had us go around at the beginning and we introduced our fiance and we said something we liked about them, um, which was really cute. And a lot mm-hmm. of people it was like, you know, she's super organized and like I'm a mess and so it's really great that she does this stuff for me or like oh he's really fun and I'm you know I just take things a lot more seriously and he really helps me you know like lighten up and have fun Mm -hmm. and it just felt like at least half the couples were kind of describing like yeah we're opposites in kind of major ways and it's nice (laughs) did you guys say you're opposites no I said I really like Ben's curiosity and love of learning and Mm. to be honest i don't remember what he said about me it was nice (laughs) (laughs) you remember how it made you feel yeah it's not what it actually was okay well that's good um but yeah so blake realizes that the physical contact with green eyes isn't bothering him and like this is also kind of a realization for me and part of me was like well is it because you're like mostly a tree now like can you still feel Does your tree body have the same, like, nerve endings in the parts that aren't flesh? Um, But he he seems to think that he should be bothered by it. Um, And I don't know if this is, like, a giving away part of his humanity thing or something. Like, I didn't know that he could do that outside of the abyss, but maybe he still can. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, he, he, you know, he's confiding in Green Eyes about how he feels weird, that he doesn't feel weird because a really big defining trauma in his life was that, you know, Carl tried to use sex and other things to like control Blake. Um, and that he feels weird knowing that that was actually real when he had like thought it wasn't, but he also isn't that bothered by it. He thinks that's weird. It's all just sort of like Blake's feeling weird about not feeling weird. Mm -hmm. That's probably hard to tell if like how much of that is like due to, just like a trauma response and how much of it is due to otherness or how much i don't know what's normal and yeah i mean it is a really big shift from blake in arc four or whatever like mm-hmm. i can see blake like this blake being in front of conquest and just being like yeah fuck you like not <laughs> completely yeah. terrified at this idea of this like masculine overbearing figure like there to dominate him you know like yeah it would bother him as much as it might bother like any person not like specifically trigger shit yeah in blake and maybe he has maybe he did give some of that up in the drains i don't really remember a ton of the physical contact stuff since then um since green eyes kissing him i guess i don't think a lot of people have tried to touch him besides green eyes oh right he wasn't a mirror yeah yeah i don't know um but yeah so then like the goblins are coming and they're gonna destroy them and green eyes is like yeah but like if you want to like you know have sex or like not have (laughs) sex or like whatever like it's chill like i'm down for whatever like let's date or something but also we really don't have to um and i don't know i just really love her (laughs) um but but something about blake's internal narration here makes me uncomfortable like he's been really like suspicious of green eyes um Mm -hmm. and i don't think he really has a reason to be and i feel like he's like he's he was really bothered by her killing jan which like fair but he doesn't reflect at all about how he instigated that and also killed a bunch of people um Mm -hmm. and i don't it it almost feels like he like barely tolerates her in the way he's he thinks about her um hmm. and i don't know if that's an accurate reading like is it just that blake is like detached from everything cuz he acknowledges at one point like i think the only people who care about me are a bird and a mermaid and he does say to her you know you're on the short list of people i'd like keep around or whatever like that i'd want to see sometimes or something and he he doesn't have any like he tries really hard to no, to not lie so but i don't know i think i also feel a little uncomfortable because she seems to be so so grateful to blake um that she's like yeah like 
she seems like she's in a really prime position for Blake to like use her and take advantage of her in like a multitude of ways. Um, hmm. Like the I don't know something about their like power dynamic feels weird, and I think she's like super down for whatever. Mm-hmm. But just the level of gratitude she has for him, like getting her out of the drains, feels weird. I don't know. Okay, interesting. Um, so I mean. Does that level of gratitude not make sense? No, it does. It's just that the fact that, like, she's so grateful that, like, you're saying he could take advantage if he wanted to. Do you think he would? I mean, he he summoned her to Hillsglade House to, like, kill people. And she was like, that's cool. And then he's having her... It just, for some reason, it feels like there's a power imbalance, but I but when thinking about it, I don't know what that is other than just her like deep sense of gratitude. Um, and it's hard for you to figure out why he also distrusts her or is having issues with that. Because I don't get the read that yeah. he barely tolerates her. Okay. So let's think about like where they're both coming from, right? So <laughs> yeah. they haven't known each other for that long. They basically yeah. met when they were in the abyss. Blake was there for a relatively short time and managed to get out. And even after that, rose was talking to him and still saying like oh the abyss might have its hold on you it might be affecting what you do might be help like making uh like pushing you towards decisions that are more destructive yada 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 right Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um she's been down there for whoever like who knows how fucking long right right like honestly who knows (laughs) like she doesn't (laughs) remember who she was really or like anything about her life or anything so she's been down there a lot fucking longer um so like just in terms of that to me it makes sense that he would be a little like cautious at the very least especially like uh i mean i don't know she's like very like abyssal (laughs) you know so um i mean most of the internal dialogue i got in this part was just hilarious because it was mostly like why the fuck are you talking about this right now (laughs) And I was just like, yeah, you know, you got a point. <laughs> yeah. One of my favorite exchanges was she's like, you're being weird and overthinking it. And Blake's like, I think you're being weird by talking about it. Right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I thought that was really funny. Um, I think that's another important contrast between them two as well. Just to like, you know, like Blake has had a lot of trauma with like people wanting, like with being uh, taken advantage of and people like touching him or hurting him without like his consent um and right. doesn't trust people that's like his baseline as a human right? right she is like starved for contact she hasn't had anyone to talk to she hasn't had any kind of like interaction with like anything except for things trying to eat her or right. maybe vice versa for <laughs> eons right so that's already going to change like their dynamic in a lot of ways as well that's true I think that does make me feel a little bit better about it. I just, I can't, basically, I just, like, don't know if Blake is going to just, like, become a horrible villain Mm. or not. And so I find myself kind of distrusting of him and, Hmm. yeah. If that's the case, I'm not saying it is or it isn't, but I'm just kind of curious your thoughts. Like, based on how people have been talking about Blake, if he ends up being, like, this major villain, like... I guess I'm just curious what your thoughts on that are in terms of how everyone's talking about him. I guess people seem to like Blake. Um, yeah, it it seems like people have a positive view of Blake, but I mean, I've tr- really tried to not find out too much, and it could mm-hmm. just be people are decent at remembering how things in the story are um, and not wanting to spoil things for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, yeah, when I read Worm, I thought Taylor, like, saved everyone and everything Mm -hmm. um and i know that a lot of fans of worm are really really pro taylor and then there's other people who are like yeah but and i just i can see blake being kind of like doing things that are really bad and people being like blake's the best Hmm. and i love blake but i'm don't understand where we're going i guess he's just like murdering people He's like getting mm-hmm. a hit list of people to murder. It's another r- random question. 
So take it with mm. a grain of thought because it just popped into my head. I'm not saying <laughs> one thing or another. I've so while we've been reading this story, mm-hmm. there's been a lot of cases. Um, as you have, I mean, since you're a pale reader first, and I'm a packed reader first, right? <laughs> so you've been <laughs> having a different, like you've had a lot more understanding and empathy with a lot of others that like I would have been like fuck no <laughs> right <laughs> like fuck that guy like no there's nothing like pretty and pulled out them blah 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 like I think the most recent one that you kind of were saying like um I don't remember exactly what you said but my gut reaction like to those clowns in the abyss right um I don't remember if it was you or somebody somebody was basically talking about like being empathetic towards them my gut reaction is still like fuck those guys right <laughs> so i'm kind of curious like blake is a total like a pretty much a total other right mm-hmm. and he hasn't done he's been pretty fucking good compared to a lot of like others or at least boogeymen so i'm kind of curious like i mean if you had just seen this guy as an other and didn't know him as a human before would you be having more empathy for him or more like maybe empathy is not the right word, but more like, I guess, understand trying to have more understanding of where he's coming from or um, not necessarily. I don't think so. Cause the, th- hmm. the thing is like, yeah, at this point, Blake has only like straight up gone to murder a couple of people. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, most of what Blake's done has been like defending, you know, the house, his friends, whatever. Um, it's only last arc that he like switched into like offensive mode Mm -hmm. um and he's continuing down that path and it's just like so like some people in our chat were kind of discussing you know the the chains boogeyman guy and like the duchamp woman and like you know Mm -hmm. how blake has maybe more of a point than we i was giving him credit for last week and i still really stand by what i said in last week's episode but the idea that you know it is complicated and she probably has done or like there's a decent chance she's a practitioner in a big established family who in pale in particular we've seen like are are, can be really really abusive to Mm -hmm. the children in their family um and yeah there's a chance she's done like really horrible messed up shit but it and so I can see why Blake is confused and questioning things. Mm -hmm. And especially if, if Blake starts relating more and identifying more with others, um, which I don't think is necessarily bad, Mm -hmm. um, but it'll become a lot easier for Blake to empathize with the chains boogeyman and harder for him to empathize with the practitioners. Mm -hmm. And I can just see him. He, it seems like we're heading toward Blake being like, yep, they all gotta die like it seems Mm. like we're heading toward him being like andy let me borrow your rocket launcher for a sec like it like Mm. we're going to a bad place whereas to me green eyes seems like morally neutral she's here to eat she's here to hang out um she's not here to like be a good presence on the world necessarily but she's not here to like murder everyone (laughs) sure she just she's just hungry but she doesn't want to eat you unless without your permission so she's right if nice. you're if you're cool after you're dead already and sentient um, she's cool mm-hmm. yeah um yeah and it's yeah it's it's like it's like toad swallow thinking about how, the fact that he helped the milkmaid right like the milkmaid scary bad not very a fan. bad um we we learned that like a lot of the others in pale have like done all, fucked up shit but it seems like they are not doing that anymore and like trying to change, especially when called out. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I can see Blake, you know, meeting the Kenneteers and being like, yeah, I did all this really fucked up shit and I'm trying to get better. And I think I'd be able to be like, Oh wow, that's really hard and awful. And it's good that you're trying to get better. But right now I'm like, this is before the murder spree. (laughs) We can stop this. We can do something. I guess another thing I'd ask um, is, like, does it make that much of a difference to you in terms of, like, intent? Because it's, I guess, like, on one hand, he could be murdering these practitioners for personal gain or for, I don't know, food or power or whatever. On the other hand, even if he's totally wrong, 
like if he's convinced himself or if he thinks I'm trying to uphold the promise I made to Evan to get rid of the world of monsters. And I literally don't know what monsters look like anymore because I look like this and I'm not a monster or at least like, so does that make it better or does that make it worse or does that not change anything? Um, no, I think it makes it better. Probably. Um, he might be more difficult to stop because he'd be more difficult to dissuade. Hmm. But I, I do think Blake wants to do the right thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and I do love Blake. He just seems to be on the path to making a lot of bad choices. Well, I won't tell you yes or no, <laughs> but I will say in Wild Bud, and I guess you haven't, uh, well, I mean, you've read pretty much the stories I have, I think. So, like, in the stories that you've read that he's written, how many times have we been able to accurately predict? where things were going <laughs> like never so just keep that in mind you know yeah, that's fair that, it, that could mean that it gets a lot worse granted <laughs> but you know it also just means like you know just keep just keep at it don't get you know just keep at it yeah um yeah but and i mean for the record i love blake i'm just worried. You're worried and i think like my regard for blake was so high and my opinion of like his character was so high that it's upsetting me more to see him make choices that seem fucked up yeah yeah i guess i would just think about it like yeah obviously there's a lot of shit flawed um i think just because he's getting more otherized his ability to think of things in terms of monsters or not monsters or good or bad is just different Mm, so i think he's probably having to learn you know how do i tell this stuff which uh and like last week's chapter uh probably explains a little bit more about like why he was standing around waiting like trying to be like hmm should i go save that woman with the hooks all in her that's getting dragged into the depths of hell or should i talk to someone and ask them what they think about that let's go talk let's go ask someone you know (laughs) um yeah so um but anyway (laughs) Yeah. So then we get the fun action part. Um and this was this was scary. Um well I just I was really unnerved by uh the goblins when they first come up because we're having this kind of fun, silly conversation about like, you know, Green Eyes being like, Yeah, if you want to hook up, I'm down and Blake being like, Literally, why are you talking about this? But then the goblins can hear and they're basically like, you know, you know, maybe I'll fuck you. And this other one will too. And it just really like changes the mood really quickly and becomes like threatening. Mm -hmm. And I just thought it was funny that he says like, well, I got two handfuls right here or whatever. And Blake's like, yeah, that is a big dick. And I'm just like, (laughs) (laughs) like, all right. It was so funny. (laughs) Yeah, he's not wrong. (laughs) Uh, uh, So good. Yeah. So basically, it's one of them has a cleaver, and there's some scary snowballs. And I honestly can't really remember the differences between the two male goblins. But then the female goblin is basically Osui from My Hero Academia. Mm -hmm. So that's fun. (laughs) Have you heard of that show? I have heard of it. I haven't read it. Or I'm sorry, I've not read it. Slash. Uh, Yeah. Manga. uh, Well, I haven't read it or watched it, but I've heard of it. Yeah, yeah, Ben likes it, and we've watched a couple of seasons, and um, I can't remember her full name, but it's it's superhero-y, and one of, so most, every, in this universe, everyone has, like, a quirk, quote-unquote, so most people have, like, one thing that they can do, right? Like, mm-hmm. uh, one girl's invisible, and that's her quirk, and, that's and one, I guess, thinking about it, some of them do have kind of multiple things but it's supposed to be like their quirk is like one thing and one <laughs> this one girl asui or sue her quirk is frog <laughs> and so frog. she can just she just does shit frogs do so she's like kind of <laughs> op she has like 78 like she has this like crazy tongue that can like you know like this goblin basically but then she can like secrete like poison from her body or something and she can like climb on walls and stuff kind of because she's like sticky just like and so they're like yes her quirk is frog and I'm like, what the fuck? 
fucking <laughs> so good. And she's she's wonderful. She wow. she has kind of green eyes vibes. So like, can she like opinion. touch people, or does she poison people, or is it like on no? Command? She can, she can control it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. Yeah, that's kind of sweet. I, yeah, there's some sort of dang. Yeah, there's like she, other she's people. So fun. I'm just thinking like if every if they have I don't know like just getting an animal is a quirk. Yeah. What would be the worst animal to get a quirk from? Oh, I feel like a mosquito sloth? wouldn't be great, but That's, yeah, I'm. Just, I mean, it probably wouldn't bad. be that bad, but well, but what if you kind of look like a mosquito? You know, that would suck. Ah, right. uh... <laughs> <laughs> a sloth might be bad if you're like wanting to be a superhero that fights people because you're be slow, but the whole holding on to stuff is cool. Was it they're like? climb down a tree like to poop once a week or something <laughs> it's the dream <laughs> does that sound right yeah right i just because i googled sloth poop and the first thing comes up like this is the title of the article the horror sloths go through every time they have to poop that's, that's the so name upsetting. of so it's like some Why meals can poop take from sloths up, up- up on the top just let it just let it all Jeez. out so given their slow movement some meals can take sloths up to a month to digest a sloth can lose one third of his body weight from pooping an ordeal that could be compared to childbirth oh my god and this okay this one doesn't sound horrible it just sounds kind of hilarious sloths climb down from their trees and do a little poo dance to dig a small hole to go in um upsetting oh that's the whole fucking article that is it Okay, I, I can't even really call it an article, but um, the, the dance was the last bullet, so I, apparently they think that's the most horrific part, because hmm. it saved like, the most horrific bit for last, I guess. After the deed is done, they do another dance to slightly cover it up before they head back up. Why they do that? No one knows, <laughs> Malia. Because it was like, why do they wait? Why do they risk their lives when they could just rain poo down from the treetops like other canopy dwellers? No one knows. That's wild. <laughs> It is wild. It really wow. doesn't seem worth it. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> yeah, I have to think about, like, yeah, if you're sloth, what parts would you actually want to keep? And what parts would you use any of it? Would you just be like, no, I like <laughs> pooping like a normal person. Like, I guess you could climb trees. You could yeah. sleep in a tree. Yeah. You could be really sure good I, at, yeah. like, yeah. red light, green light, I guess. Only if you could turn. Well, no, you wouldn't. You'd be. You I'm wouldn't. like, you wouldn't. You'd be last. You'd be really bad at that, actually. I'm <laughs> just about, thinking um, of like the. Sl- yeah, no, that's wrong. Go ahead. Um, I'm trying to decide if a platypus would be like a really cool quirk or Dude, a really I would, bad quirk. I would love being a platypus. Would you have to like lay eggs? <laughs> hey, if you could turn it on and off only when you want, I could choose to well, lay an egg. Well, she can't like. Well, no, she can talk normally. Does she look like a frog? No, but there's some people, some people have like bird heads and they can't turn that on and off. Hmm. I don't understand the show. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't have an incredibly consistent, <laughs> like whatever, but it's, it's kind of fun. It's like, okay. it's like Worm the anime. So it's like, you know, so there's some I feel fun. Like I doubt that. <laughs> there's some like fun powers and stuff. Yeah, you're right. It's, fu- it's Worm the like Shojin anime, whatever, like, like aged down and they just make lots of big speeches and they all want to be the best and is it like a bunch of case 53s with some of those duck heads um yeah not entirely but there's definitely case 53s in there and they're not treated bad which is nice that's good yeah no i don't think anyone's ever like ew about anyone like the egghead guy i hate that guy he sucks forgot his name (laughs) but just like egg egg. (laughs) egg dude that and then victoria hates eggs which is just, just funny it's really funny like whatever i mean i like eggs but i wouldn't want to eat eggs after seeing that guy oh it's harsh okay if you saw someone who's like had like yolk running down their fucking head and shit <laughs> like would you be like mm, i'm in the mood for some like over easy with some bacon and stuff no i really <laughs> hope not yeah i mean if i would be really like just disturbed if whoever I was with saw that and was like, let's go get some breakfast. <laughs> you know? <laughs> All right. Anyway. Yeah. I don't remember what his like 
what he, what he actually did besides he was egg i don't know i mean i know he was egg but i don't remember like it's yeah if he had any like combat things or i feel like he had some stuff but i just can't remember what they are anyway yeah, i don't remember i'm sure i'm sure people will tell us be like oh, i can't believe you forgot egg one i mean it's not his name that's your cat but <laughs> i apologize for that malia it's okay it's right egg one yeah, I say Egwene. It's Egwene. Um, Sorry. No, no one knows how to pronounce it. Uh, well, I mean, it's your cat, so I think you probably are cor- the correct one. I Egwene. Guess. Not bad. Yeah. Um. Sorry. Let's keep talking about uh what we're supposed to talk about. <laughs> cool. Um. But yeah, so they kick some ass. Um. It's interesting that like the goblins are seem to kind of be their own un- undoing. Like. The thing that allows Blake and Green Eyes to really like get the upper hand is that I mean he he does a pretty good job in killing one of the goblins, but it's really the tongue lady who <laughs> kills that one. Um, because she's like being greedy and wants to kill them more or something. But then, you know, it goes from being a two versus three to a two versus two, and they're and Blake doesn't even describe it. He's like, Yeah, we just fucking took him down. Like we just dominated um so they they fucked up yeah they fucked up that's kind of great i think it was interesting that like i mean one thing that made me hopeful was blake's first thing was like okay promise not to hurt people or whatever and the goblins are like absolutely not and so he's like well okay (laughs) weapon form or death so they're in weapon form i wonder how long they'll stay that way good question yeah that was pretty great (laughs) Um, and uh yeah green eyes ate the statue pretty much (laughs) <laughs> this, is, this is really funny the they're just like where the fuck is evan <laughs> and green eyes is like oh i hear him help 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 like <laughs> god he's so good um and yeah so green eyes snatches the gargoyle out of the air and gets upset because it's not meat and says she wants a snack and that she wants chicken nuggets and then you know blake kind of calls her out because she he can he knows she's like saying she wants to eat Evan. Um, because Evan's like, I owe you one, and she's like, Really? <laughs> <laughs> like, I am hungry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and she's like, I want real chicken nuggets. And Evan's like, I I don't know that those exist. Like, those aren't like chicken nuggets aren't really real. And she's yeah, anyway, I don't have to repeat the whole thing. Go read it. It was great. Yeah, that was great. Love it. <laughs> oh my goodness. And we don't really see what she says i hope that next chapter we get evan being like she wants to eat me or something but we'll see or i hope blake goes out and they have chicken nuggets <laughs> <Or> something <sighs> yeah, awesome well uh next blake passes a barrier and talks to some people yeah um this is another thing that i like i know i i was like are they doing city magic what's going on uh he's lucky that it's uh joyce doing yeah the magic um because this works out pretty well in terms of getting to talk to the junior council um but yeah he's basically like lol i'll be back in an indeterminate amount of time and you know bye (laughs) (laughs) and i mean i guess like i don't know what else he could have done but it felt mean (laughs) (laughs) like i feel like he didn't expect to be able to get through and then he was just like oh okay i guess i'll be back <laughs> yeah maybe but i mean it sucks that they don't have any sort of better strategy yeah that is unfortunate. um yeah and so then gail confronts him and it's like wow how did you do that and he's like oh it's because your sister or whatever can't fuck with me and <laughs> she's like why should i let you in and he's like oh because like i killed your husband and she's like oh cool rad <laughs> 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 which is wild <laughs> it's hilarious she's like oh man she shouldn't uh that was that wasn't her call but okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay come in <laughs> i guess you're cool it's just like how fucking horrible horrible was this man that it's just like oh okay <laughs> <laughs> the, so um, i guess he kind of made a good choice <laughs> well it was weird because this makes it seem like the the two mountain dudes one of them was gail's husband but i thought it was the necromancer because one of the mountain men's one of the mountain men was married to jan and so i thought the necromancer was gail's 
husband. I guess he could have been Joyce's husband, but it this felt like a this it I feels like the remember. options are number one, I'm wrong. Number two, it's just a little continuity error and it's no big deal. Or number three, it's a clue. <laughs> so <laughs> Well, I guess it's one of those. <laughs> there's a one in three chance that this matters. So I'll drop it. <laughs> For now. <laughs> um but yeah, he's like yeah, I'm. I murdered your uncle, and so let's keep going. Let's keep it moving. Let's. Let's. Yeah. <laughs> also, let's call my cousins. And I was like, I miss your cousins. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> they do. Uh, are they still in the abyss? Like, where are they? Where did they go? What's happening? They got everybody out of the abyss. How did they get on the phone? Well, we didn't see that. <laughs> we saw Blake walk off out of the portal thingy without looking back like they didn't have coats like i don't know what happened to them they all <laughs> they all got uh, okay anyway we're just gonna move on um okay. blake blake slides into some dms although apparently not really but whatever you guys know what i mean <laughs> um this was a really fun way to do a chapter um it's interesting that blake you know like we i think we see everything that blake sees um in the chat because he mentions that he had waited a little bit before saying something um i find this to be pretty interesting it's interesting that some behames are online although they probably weren't all at the house with alistair and rose or whatever but like i wonder you know what do they know did they know about rose like do they know about the night i don't know um but they're like okay maybe we should make some sort of deal before we know you know who's won who's lost and Penny is being like super controlling and it's kind of annoying. Um, yeah. Um, Mags is like acting like the babysitter. She's like, if you, you know, do this again, I'll have to do this. But isn't, I mean, I think Mags is doing a pretty good job. You know, she's not like, she's like a debate moderator or something. She's like trying to set and enforce rules about the conversation. She's mm -hmm. not like giving too much of her opinion about anything mm -hmm. unless it's about like the conversation which yeah max is great i hope we see her soon yeah um, she's doing a good job yeah this part. it's it's also so i read i usually what i do is i read the chapter and then i listen to the audiobook when i do my notes and the audiobook makes penny and her the way she sends messages like real annoying because <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like penny d da -la -la. Penny D, da -la -la -la. Penny D, and she's like, ah! <laughs> and it's different, yeah. you know, when you're just reading it. <laughs> Probably less obnoxious, you know, for all the characters, but it felt annoying. Um, yeah. I love that it's fun seeing practitioners in, like, teen practitioners because Penny starts to, you know, say. Uh, you know, I know we're tired. I know we're upset or whatever. And like list off one more. I know. And Craig's like combo break <laughs> 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 to like fuck up the rule of three. And it's like, I don't even know what that would have gotten her. Probably some like infinitesimal whatever, but it's really funny. Um, Yeah. Yeah. That was pretty good. I just, yeah, this, <sighs> it was good. Um, We get a, confirmation that there's less than three hours left till sunrise um this night has passed faster than i thought it would but also mm -hmm. that's still enough time for some shit to go down oh yeah um and then we get blake being super dramatic <laughs> i mean it's like i don't know how else he would have done this but it feels real dramatic <laughs> to just like rename the ch his name in the chat to be like hi i'm here but if he starts talking as though he was lola that's like not cool um yeah. but it's like because he can't type for shit he like does that and then it takes him so long to be like hello it's fine <laughs> and it just takes him so long to be like no everyone <laughs> is fine i just want to talk to you <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah like maybe he could have like had her i don't know it, yeah it was very dramatic I just, very, like, yeah um <laughs> it was hilarious though um <laughs> we we get a little bit of feeling bad about jan being killed she made good cookies and she was lonely and her husband sucked 
Um, mm. And the behaviors had this weird quirk. I mean, I, it was useful in terms of the story for us to know if there was like that there were side conversations happening. Um, and maybe if they're on some sort of chat where it's harder to see DMs or something. But I feel like Owen and I don't know who else would be like, I'm PMing you, <laughs> you know, like in the main <laughs> chat kind of a lot. Um, and yeah, I don't think the the last bit would have landed as hard um, if we weren't aware that there were these other chats and options going on. But it just felt like real dramatic to be like, by the way, everyone, I'm saying shit behind your back. <laughs> um yeah blake is like hey you shouldn't want your family to be in charge of jacob's bell and i'm like okay with the behames they're gonna get rose and they're gonna get more power drainage so that's fair yeah and the duchamps i guess it's that theory of like oh these why would your family change and stop doing these things that have like worked um but yeah i feel like it's obvious why the family whose head is married to a diabolist would have problems. <laughs> yeah. It, it makes less sense to me about the Duchamps, but like, yeah. Um, yeah, and Blake's just, he's hes come so that they can see that the Thorburns are real people or something and also get names for his hit list. Mm -hmm. um, and Penny's like, nope. And Megs is like, well, aren't you... Like that's shitty. Don't yeah. just silence everyone. Yeah, I you don't like the killing people, and it's it's a little scary. But you know, <laughs> and I'm like a little <laughs> okay. Um, I thought it was funny that they're like so pissed about Penny muting them, like for like I don't know, <laughs> kind of a long time. They're all just like, "How dare you do that?" Like they're just so pissed about they're it. They're just and really like, mad. Why don't we focus on what Blake just said? <laughs> um and then the the thorburns are here um there's this thing about like Kristoff's name where you know penny is being a little anal retentive but also somewhat helpful and trying to help people keep track of like who's who so she changes their names to signify that they're thorburns by adding a t or whatever mm -hmm. but she does change Kristoff to chris and then he changes it back <laughs> and yeah. i don't get why she did that and maybe because the reason she changed uh blake's name back to blake because it was too long for her screen or something i don't know <laughs> mm. yeah it just felt like kind of a like like a f interesting detail like it, it characterized Kristoff, but i was like i don't i don't get why she did that but cool yeah I mean, it's kind um, of annoying <clears throat> yeah um and so blake's like hey talk to my cousins because even if they're like dickheads uh you should know they exist and talk to them before you like kill them like you killed molly um mm -hmm. and blake t i was gonna say blake takes yet another opportunity to tell laird's kids that he killed laird um but this was brought up by i think owen to be fair so <laughs> it wasn't quite the same as blake just bringing it up yeah that's true um, but he definitely was like fuck yeah <laughs> it's like obviously like yeah <laughs> Um, and Blake's like, yeah, I don't really have a future. I'll either be dead or I'll be like off somewhere else fucking shit up. And Mags is like, yeah, if you like, you know, did the whole seal thing, you'd like have some more stability and the, you know, Abyss wouldn't have quite as much of a pull on you. And Blake's like, yeah, I would definitely rather die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, definitely rather die. And I just, I feel like. Blake doesn't like being bound, but I don't fully understand why else he is this resistant to the seal thing. Because uh, I don't really know what he knows about it, I guess. But Peter's like, hey, Mags, I feel like I should be able to talk more. And she's like, yeah, that sounds fair. And I'm like, this is a, so, this is a bad decision. <laughs> And he's just like, bam, 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 bam. <laughs> Peter pulls a real Blake and is like, hi, I'm here to antagonize all of you. <laughs> yeah. Hi, actually, fuck all of you. I wouldn't try to kill your parents. I'd try to kill you because you're obviously the problem. <laughs> 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 at least your parents 
like acknowledge that they're dickheads. <laughs> <sighs> um, <laughs> and i i think it's cool that he's like you know you should all feel bad about molly because you all should have done something and it's like really shit and i like that he gets this opportunity to like shove this in their faces um yeah. i like that they you know like owen here says you know i do feel bad i talked to my dad about this like i do feel bad about this um and he's like okay but feeling bad doesn't fix anything and i'm like I mean, it kind of can. I think, yeah, it's it's not like just feeling bad doesn't fix anything. But if you reflect on that mm -hmm. and let that inform your choices, you yes. know, if you let that, that motivate can... you to fix something or like to change your behavior or to. Right. Like like feeling like paralyzed and stuff, feeling just totally like whatever. Like, yeah, that that's not really helpful. Like what I'm on a plane and i like i'm convinced i'm gonna die because i'm on a plane that's not helpful and convincing myself to not think about it is good yeah but i also can't control anything that's happening to me when i'm on that plane whereas maybe feeling bad about your dad like murdering <laughs> slash orchestrating the murder of your classmate can help you <laughs> to make like, some decisions down the line yeah <laughs> They're slightly different, yes, uh, yeah. situations. <laughs> um, <sighs> so then we get probably one of the most memorable lines for me in all of Pact so far. Like, this is really going to stick out for me when I think about Pact. Um, Penny's like, you know, I just want to say that you suck and nobody likes you. And I'm so proud of all of my cousins for not, like, giving, you know, giving you any names for your murder list <laughs> and blake's like i have seven names <laughs> <laughs> and this was such a like holy fuck moment <laughs> and he's like you know blake out mic drop talk to my cousins if you want bye um yeah it was good shit i yeah, love that Pe it was so good and peter is like you don't deserve a f safe space fuck you <laughs> <laughs> and like it's terrifying <sighs> but i love this i don't know it's so it, it also just says something about how awful their family is given that like like i can't imagine being like oh yeah it'd be cool if someone like murdered my you know uncle like my aunt's husband like yeah or like you know my sister's husband or like you know just like i can't imagine how shitty things have to be to be like, ooh, you're looking for people to murder? Murder this person? <gasps> it's not... It's pretty It's pretty wild. It's wild stuff. It's so wild. But yeah, so this was... I have seven names. I just... I can't. <laughs> and what a number. Yeah. It's more hardcore it than feels, three. It is. It's the next... Mm -hmm. It's the next number. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm. All right. Well, now we're at our pale in comparison section. So I feel like there's a lot of things about pale we could talk about, um, even not being related to this chapter. But uh, <laughs> but uh, it looks like there's something uh, from last chapter um, that you do want to talk about. Yeah, this is just a brief thing. But um, I think this is also a 2114 spoiler. But um, we get to see Anne fight, which was fun. And she has a bunch of chains. <laughs> and it just immediately reminded me of the chain boogeyman. And I wonder if she like got inspiration from him. Um, mm -hmm. And it just sort of like made me happy. And I can't remember exactly what Anne and Deb and all them do. If she's like an abyssal adjacent person. But it was pretty funny. To it be was like, pretty. Hey. <laughs> yeah. uh, that was. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's like oh, the first time I've been cheering for Anne. I know. I was yeah. like, really, it was, it was really cool that they were all like, oh yeah, Anne, like completely 100% has got this. Like they were just like, like mm -hmm. Lucy was like, oh, you know, like if you have any big favors or whatever, like, you know, like pull out your big shit, but also you completely have got this you're going to own. And then she does. It was like, yeah. Yeah, like she like totally dominated and it was it was great. awesome I was um like, fuck you you stupid kids and <laughs> you fucking 
Carmine bastard. Fuck yeah. your face. And like she still sucks real bad, but it was yeah. just so But it's I better know, if like she sucks while being on your side, you know? Right. And it something about her like, you know, being a capable practitioner is a lot more satisfying than if she just like sucked. Um, yeah. And sucked it sucked at like yeah. everything. Yeah. yeah. It it is yeah, it is more satisfying that she actually like knows what she's doing. Yeah. I agree. And like, you know, Anthem would have been like the you know, a bad person for that. Like ever it seems like basically everyone else there would have been a really bad person in that fight, but Anne was like perfect. Yeah. Yeah, she was um, she did, she was great. She's like, you guys don't have anything I want. You can fuck yeah. off. <laughs> <laughs> so she's like fucking perfect. That's great. It was awesome. Um the uh. another thing that's a little bit general is um I'm happy that I've been reading Pact before this part of the story um with mm. Mariska being like an abyssal goddess or whatever. Oh yeah. Like, I know more about what that means. Um a lot more than what we've gotten from Pale. Um yeah. I think partially probably because Pact is so much about the abyss. Mm-hmm. While those kind of been like staying away from it, exploring other things, and not wanting to like retread the same stuff. Yeah. Um. But it's so much more effective knowing like, oh, all of her like scary servant people that are like dying or whatever and being sucked down and coming back. Like I know more about like what that is and what that means. And um, it's just yeah, really having me think of Blake and Boogeyman and all that stuff all the time. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's pretty spooky stuff, but it's, it's it's super interesting. Okay, I know this isn't really, but like we have to talk about <laughs> we have to talk about it a little bit because like I'm you are going to be on their episode this week if you wanted to. I guess save it, but we can talk about it. Well, we can, let's talk about it a little bit because I'm assuming there will be another chapter that who knows if like it, it will change my reaction, but like. Mm. I mean, who knows? Pro- maybe yeah. not. But like, I'm assuming that it's going to be an interlude that has where we don't learn anything about Avery, and it like has like nothing to do with anything. He's like what I'm assuming. I think you're probably absolutely right. Um, but yeah, yeah, we don't have to talk about that much. But I'm just worried. Is she it's dead? Like, Is she a boogeyman? I don't think she's dead, at least yet. But the description of how quickly the blood was spreading. Mm-hmm. and that d- does not sound good and it doesn't seem like snowdrop managed to get her into the i mean mate i uh, i mean they blocked broke, there but and charles looks sad and fuck you charles fuck your face bro and she describes like a yanking sensation when snowdrop pulls her and she's like been shot and so that's bad it's all bad yeah it's like well shit like i mean it's is like a little bit more real i feel like like Mm -hmm. you know these are little kids basically Mm -hmm. even though they don't think they're little kids um they've been able to get out of everything bad so far um even lucy with her like close calls with like the fey like winter fey and all that stuff she did get right she was hurt but she got out of it and this it's like oh like it's not it's not 100 percent that avery's gonna be all right after this because who the fuck's gonna help her now you know who's gonna save her the the worst things so far in terms of physical pain for the can or physical damage to the canateers have been Verona's hand and yeah like Lucy's arm probably during the face stuff um and so I don't know if this is a three beat exactly but this one is worse this one seems pretty bad <laughs> and, and uh... I just can't imagine Avery becoming more abyssal I can't imagine the story without her it doesn't feel doesn't feel right yeah. We're just gonna have um, to see where the story I, goes and have faith I, I guess but <laughs> right like i don't think she's dead i do think that there will be lasting consequences mm-hmm. but i'm hoping they're not abyssal related um oh, yeah i hope not that would suck um but yeah it's like gunshots are weird because i don't know it just it obviously it just depends on like where obviously you get you get shot um mm. you can get shot and be fine for a while you know you can get shot mm-hmm. and like bleed out in minutes. Like mm. it's just uh depending on the type of bullets, all that kind of stuff, it just is all very uh different. So um 
it sucks. So I'll we'll just have to see. I'm like, snowdrop, put pressure. <laughs> Make a tourniquet. <laughs> Make a tourniquet. And just her abdomen? Put- Isn't it like her... Oh, I forgot. Yeah, it wasn't her abdomen. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make a tourniquet. It's not going to help. <laughs> Sorry, I was thinking of her leg. Never mind. Yeah, a tourniquet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, now make a tourniquet. Um, although, yeah, put a lot of pressure. A lot, a lot of, of fucking pressure. pressure. And don't let up and just hold it. There's some good shit nowadays um, that you can get. And they have, a, like... In the emergency room, you can get it in uh, first aid kits and stuff if you buy one to keep in your car. Because I have one because I just had that luck to where I come across accidents enough that uh, I keep one in my car. <laughs> not well, like not like that often, but enough that I've had to use it a few times. Um, but well, they have like uh, special gauze that they've actually like. Um, I'm blanking on what it's called for some reason, but you can Google. It's basically like a uh, fast clot type of gauze. Um, it has like hmm. clotting type of agents in it um and i mean if someone's like it, it helps a lot um and they've developed a lot of the stuff in combat um that's actually where they've gotten a lot of the technology for emergency medicine hmm. like at least yeah which is kind of interesting yeah so, which sucks that like you know we've had to go to war and have people be in that situation but i guess at least we have uh better equipment for that for mm. bad accidents and gunshots and things yeah anyway I hope she's okay, Malia. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm not okay. <laughs> like, the main, I'm like, I know she, I'm pretty sure she, like, I'm pretty, like, damn positive she's not dead yet, because she cannot be an off-screen death, for fuck's sake. Right. You know? I, I will write. And it, it did make me think about Blake and Arc 7. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, and that was a lot more like, and then I died, um, than this was. Um, yeah, and he, he even didn't say that. He just said he didn't make it to the window. Um, whereas what kind of boogeyman like... do you think Avery's gonna? Be? <laughs> Holy fuck! <laughs> <laughs> That'd be interesting. Would she sprout like actual antlers? Mm. Or no, she'd be. Or would she be like a wolf? I hate this. Let's talk about something. Else. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, okay. Um, well, this is a good transition. Um, we're gonna talk about Malia's bold and specific prediction. Yay! Um, so I don't know if I've predicted this before exactly, but I think that Grandma Rose didn't specially make Rose necessarily. I think like Blake is the the her change agent. Um, I think that Blake is the specially created one or something. Like he talks a little bit about in this chapter that he bleeds and he's like surprised that there's hmm. blood, and I'm like, hey that's probably a good sign right like like he had a heart and he has blood and he's the one out there like really hates the status quo like really like gonna try to fuck some shit up and it feels like this is i mean and it could just be like she needs them both Mm -hmm. to whatever but he really feels like the the vehicle through which change can be enacted um it doesn't fully match with the whole like Blake's supposed to die sort of a thing, but I mean it kind of does. I don't know. Okay, sweet. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Malia. Um. All right. We're talking about a previous discussion question, um, <laughs> which was pick a scene from Pact or Pale. If that scene was in a musical, what song would the characters be singing? Um, Captain Rhino's first, and I, I'm gonna be honest. I don't think I'm gonna read all of these. Well, I was gonna say, of- how about I have like two from this list that i really want to shout out and maybe you can pick one or two all right is it going to be from dr horrible's sing-along blog uh i was actually going to pick two different ones but oh what am i saying there's disney on here have you seen <laughs> dr horrible sing along i have blog? okay um, yeah it's been a while since i saw that i honestly forgot about it until i saw this list and then i was like oh my gosh i need to watch it again <laughs> uh go ahead sorry you, can, you, you go first i gotta look at Okay, this. well, the, the two I wanted to shout out were um, Alistair. Alistair would sing, Oh, I Just Can't Wait to Be King from The Lion King, which is fucking perfect. <laughs> um, and then uh, Molly's Bell and the question that Blake is asking, which is who is the monster and who is the man, um, is very prominent in the song The Bells of Notre Dame from The Hunt Back of Notre Dame. And that's a great shout mm. out. Very, 
underrated. So, I like it. Yeah. I missed Those the first the- one because I was trying to look at one of my songs. You said from... Uh, the Lion King. Uh, which which one from The Lion King? Oh, I just can't wait to be king. Okay. Lion I guess the other one's The Lion King, too. King. <laughs> just uncanny. Um, <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> okay let's stop <laughs> you, you, okay. just, you just gotta start talking <laughs> okay okay it's like yeah. all right um just because i love this song i mean i love a lot of disney songs but i gotta say uh um i'll make a man out of you uh from mulan um and captain Rhino says uh this would be in the context of practitioner patriarchs think they're singing this song but they're actually singing a villain song <laughs> yep. um and then the other one it's uh, from Dr. Horrible's sing-along blog, um, uh, The Bad Horse Letter. <laughs> and it'd be for the Abyss to All Boogeymen. That would make me which laugh. Which is just really funny. <laughs> <laughs> if y'all don't know, uh, just Google like just Google it. Bad Horse Letter for Dr. Horrible's sing-along blog. And then just be like, this is supposed to be, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, just hilarious. It's just hilarious. Anyway, um, such a good one. Yeah, and this whole list is great. But yeah, this is, is a great list. Y'all should take a look at it. It's on our Reddit thread yeah. for last episode. Yeah. Um, Ripper one three three seven uh has one that's very funny and also very painful. <laughs> he says that uh, <laughs> Charles <That's funny. laughs> in summer break, um, when he steps out of the arena, would sing this to Lucy, and it's always look on the bright side of life, <laughs> which from Monty Python. That's hilarious. It's rude. <laughs> That's really funny. Oh, it's so good. Okay. Um, Hobo Demon says, when the rest of the dog tags show up in the arena, ragtimes, he wanted to say, um, with Alabaster covering Emma Goldman, John opening with, I am here so you can get to be, and the rest of the number, what the dog tags would have wanted to say. And I don't <laughs> think I'm, I can't think of what that song, go- how that song goes. But I can't um, either, but it sounds sad. It does. <laughs> um tommy b says that reggie the composite kid would sing people disappear here by halsey mm. which very on the nose pretty on point <laughs> yeah damn <laughs> um and then last but not least the lime boy um they're saying that they started to make a list of songs on their phone that make them think of other characters before realizing they already have one apparently so some highlights uh, Blake returning from the abyss and getting pissed at Rose. Be Cyclops rock. They might be giants. Um, Molly getting more and more pissed at Mags. Would be uh, Mrs. Bluebeard. Also by they might be giants. Um, <laughs> the Jacobs Bell others getting more and more riled up by Molly's Bell. Ding dong. Rude tales of magic and huge today. Uh, Mustard's introduction songs song. <clears throat> Either reprehensible or kiss me son of God. Um, also by they might be giants. They also say expect 90% of this to be it might be giants. Sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's see. Mag's at the end of her arc. Um, talking about Patrick, uh, dead to me, Eel Valley. The Bahame kids ganging up on Blake after erasing a chapter. Push back the hands. They might be giants. And let me see. The denizens of the forest ribbon tail trail taunting Avery. Careful what you pack. They might be giants. Last but not least, rumors about Clementine's car. Summer breeze. They might be giants. I have a lot more. They might be giants. I should listen to apparently. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like I might have to look up some of these songs. Yeah. They're great. They have one about James K. Polk. Mm, who's the president. I think someone like challenged them to like to write a song about it. They were like, yeah, we can write a song about anything. And someone was like, all right, James K. Polk. And they were like, done. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really, it's, it's solid. It's a great song. That's so great. Oh my God. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, all right. Oh my, this is a great discussion question, Jen. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> all right. Uh, this week's discussion question. If you went on a marriage retreat with a character, who would you go with and what good quality would you name for them? <sighs> <sighs> I thought it was, yeah. I got inspired by you, Malia. Um, well, thanks for listening, everybody. If you enjoyed this episode, you'd like to help support the podcast, please subscribe, share it with your friends, and leave a rating and review. To support our podcast, go to patreon.com slash doofmedia. And if you'd like to support Wildbow as he continues to write fantastic stories, go to patreon.com slash wildbow. 
you can follow the pod on Twitter at Pale Comparison or send us an email at paleincomparisonpod at gmail.com. Keep an eye out for our Reddit thread in r slash parahumans where you can answer our discussion question and share your thoughts on this episode. In addition, if you would like to see all of my predictions laid out, check out our episode description for a link to a prediction tracker. Next episode, we will be covering chapters 13.5 and 13.6. Also, I want to do a little shout out and congratulations to one of the other Doof podcasts. Um, The Kingslingers has just wrapped up their second season. Um, It's never a bad time to check out the Kingslingers. Um, I like to binge their stuff because I don't read Stephen King and I never will. So I want the (laughs) whole plot to stay in my head. So I actually just started their coverage of The Stand, which is like a really popular Stephen King novel, apparently. Um, And it was the last one in season two. And there were like a couple of times today that I wanted to be like, oh, yeah, like in The Stand. And then I was like, oh, that's not where like you know like that's not a wild bow story like i don't know <laughs> i just like sort of dropped it but um oh it's, cool yeah uh tell them congrats and maybe listen to some stephen king shit uh yeah i think they're doing it and some other ones in season three and it'll be their last Ooh. season supposedly so yeah supposedly we'll you see. never know well no you never know <laughs> <laughs> yeah matt and scott are great they're really really fun mm-hmm. to listen to so you should mm-hmm. check them out this week's fun fact um so everyone's heard you know stuff about the world's oldest pros or profession in the world being prostitution um turns out it it might actually be dentistry what (laughs) apparently one study found evidence of teeth being drilled in skulls that date back from 7500 to 9000 years ago which is a long time ago it's a long time ago it's a really long time ago the questions are do they know that that was a service that was exchanged for some sort of monetary value? <laughs> and second, do they know that there weren't other things? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe even prostitution in exchange for dentistry. You never Whoa. know. Wow. No, nah, I mean, but at the very least, dentistry has been around for a really fucking long time. And um, that's really cool. Which is pretty cool. I honestly would be surprised if that was literally the oldest profession in the world because, like, really, you guys couldn't think of anything else first, <laughs> like normal health or. <laughs> I mean, it's the teeth first. This was the first one they were, where they were like, no, you will give me exactly three chickens for one filling. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> this is the first time they were like, no, this is an exchange. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like, yeah, or was it even dentistry? Was it just torture, you know? Hopefully it was dentistry. Damn, okay. <laughs> I know. Shit. shit. <laughs> what, what would uh, they fill them with? Because I'm assuming you drill it for well, cavities or something. Well, yeah, that's something like they didn't just like want to pull then the teeth what? out. They're fucking drilling them. Like, right. I don't know. I mean, they might have just been like more advanced than I'm giving them credit for. So yeah. I'm sh- I didn't look at the study. I'm sure they would have figured out if it was like torture or something. They probably, I don't know. Uh, assuming they would know. Yeah. I don't know. It's like 9,000 years ago, so who knows? Right. <laughs> the <long> time. <laughs> last time I went to the dentist, I so I, I moved uh, somewhat recently, as y'all might know, and I um, <clears throat> had to find a new dentist and stuff. And so I ended up at like a dentist that is super for children. Like they have <laughs> like murals of like squirrels and rabbits in like medieval costumes all over the walls. <laughs> and like there's TVs everywhere that are playing like, you know disney movies and crap um because at first i was like wow i feel kind of embarrassed that i'm here as a patient because i'm obviously not really supposed to be here and like the staff they were all like cool and whatever but then the thing where i was like no i think i might come back to this dentist was the fact that above every exam chair they have a tv that's playing Mm. some movie and i was there like kind of late um and so the little mermaid had just finished and they were like oh yeah like what do you want to watch or whatever and i was like princess and the frog and the guy got really excited and he was like i love princess and the frog <laughs> <laughs> and so um i i got like a couple of fillings um but i got to just watch princess and the frog while they did it and they didn't numb me this is like the second time this has happened to me where they were like oh. these aren't that bad tell me if it hurts <laughs> and it wasn't that bad no it was fine but it was horrifying <laughs> There was no pain, but the whole time I was like, I hate this. Yeah. 
So I always feel like it's because uh, we have some procedures that like we have to keep people kind of awake for, you mm-hmm. know, just because we either have to tell, have them like give breathing instructions or because like it might cause them to breathe like too deeply so it can affect uh, the accuracy of the biopsy or whatever we're doing. And so, huh. but, I mean, most of our procedures, like the worst part about it is getting like the numbing medicine anyway. And so mm-hmm. it always sucks because like when they're doing consent, a lot of times the freaking resident will go out and be like, oh yeah, they're going to knock you out. You're going to be completely like out and stuff. Oh and some of those things, some of those cases I will try because they can be very painful, but like some of them I can't. And so I have to kind of be like, hey, so it's kind of light sedation. I'm going to make you comfortable. You might not sleep, but you probably won't care anyway. And sometimes they're able to you know, accept that. And sometimes they're like, what do you mean? I'm not going to sleep. They told me I was going to sleep. What do you mean? And I'm like, it's going to be fine. <laughs> like, <laughs> you're going to be okay. And then like 90% of the time they're like, oh, we're done. Or like, oh, that wasn't that bad. Mm. So it's fine. But it just is like, <sighs> anyway, that's just yeah. my excerpt. <laughs> I had sucks. laughing gas when I got three of my wisdom teeth taken out. Mm-hmm. And so I remember like they also at this dentist appointment, they were like, wow, you were like super cooperative and helpful. And like, I've never had anyone like move their tongue out of the way. And I'm like, that's because you work with children. But OK, <laughs> but I remember doing this. <laughs> part of why I do that is I remember during my wisdom teeth extraction that I was really trying to be helpful. But apparently like I just kept sticking my tongue in like all the wrong places. And he kept having <laughs> to be like, can you stop? And I was like, we. <laughs> so i don't remember anything about my wisdom tooth extraction except afterwards uh the vicodin made me throw up Uh, and so yeah which was not great but it's all right so i didn't really take vicodin after (laughs) very much and then i went to a barbecue a couple days after which you're definitely not supposed to do but i like was like i'm not missing this barbecue it's a filipino barbecue it's at deandra's house and that was the best food they're watching scary movies how did you manage to eat how did i manage to eat yeah um very carefully and not much of it i only <laughs> chewed with my front teeth and made sure i swallowed like i don't know, I, I didn't ha- i didn't have that much again this it was a really stupid idea but i did it and i still have all my teeth to this day and everything went fine <laughs> but don't do that if you get your wisdom <laughs> teeth out don't go to a barbecue <laughs> until no. they tell you it's okay to eat stuff <laughs> it's amazing all right well i have to work tomorrow so i'm gonna <laughs> go but uh sorry for being so late guys it's my fault so well first it was my fault so it's fine yeah but you probably wouldn't have been late but i was like i had the hiccups to be fair guys <laughs> that wouldn't have been a fun recording i mean it probably it would have it, it might have been fun at first but it would have gotten real old to be listening to me like <laughs> this time for our paling comparison you know <laughs> Right, like no one was sick. There was no emergency. <laughs> I had the hiccups, man. I couldn't get to stop. They like were they were bad. So, <laughs> uh, all right, guys. Well, have a good one. Talk to you next week, and Malia, I'll talk to you later. Awesome. Bye. Bye. <laughs>